Okay, continuing on in the red slice, this is standard normal values, basic. And what you're going to find here is that this lesson is very much like uh, what you did in the last lesson, but now the area or probability is known, and what you don't have is the z-score. Now once again, you're going to be dealing with the Alex calculator and a new button on the calculator, which I refer to as the Z button. Notice that the Z button will tell you a Z score, kind of makes sense since it's the Z button, if you enter the area under the curve, and be careful here, to the right of it. Now remember the P of Z button liked the area to the left. It liked working on the left side. But now this button likes working on the right side. So let's be careful with that and let's look at a real problem. Now in this problem, notice here that they're telling us the area under the curve to the right of a particular z-score, which is unknown, so we're going to call it c, is 0.6985. So it's exactly the opposite problem from what we had earlier. It's like we know the answer, but we don't know the question. So let's go over here once again to our uh, very convenient uh, work forms and let's set this problem up. Okay, so here we are. We know that the area under the curve to the right of our unknown z-score is 0.6985. Now, I don't know exactly where to draw that line. It's just going to be a guess. If I knew exactly where to draw that line, I'd have the answer here. But for one thing we do know is since this is 0.6985, that's greater than half. So it's going to have to be over this way someplace. So I'm not sure where this is going to be. I'm just going to draw it in there someplace. And I'm going to call this C. Now notice that the area under the curve to the right of C is this value here, and notice that that is exactly what the Z button likes. It likes it when we have the area under the curve to the right. So what I can simply do here is I can take the Z of 0.6985 and I'll get my answer directly because the Z button likes that side. So simply go to the calculator, hit the Z button of 0.6985 and we'll have the answer immediately and that's to two decimal places negative 0 0.52. Now as we've seen before there are several variants to this problem. Let's go over here and look at my notes uh, for this particular section. And what I've just shown you is the first case. Because the Z button likes to give you the Z score when you know the area under the curve to the right of it, if we do know this area to the right, we can just immediately use the Z button. Down here, we'll simply put the known area. Now, there's two other variations. If we have the area to the left, obviously the Z button isn't going to like that. So what we're going to have to do is to find the area to the right first by first subtracting from 1. But we can embed that. We can do that within the Z button. So we can click the Z button and then put this 1 minus the area underneath. If we were to want the area that's trapped between two unknown z-scores. We can do a similar treatment. What we'll do to get the answers for c and negative c is to simply take the z of 1 minus a divided by 2 because what that will do is to first of all calculate the amount of area that's in these two tails and then divide that in half equally. So we'll see some of these variations. Use the notes, uh, print these out, and uh, let's see what we get into next. Okay, let's go ahead and one more of those. Notice here, once again, they're telling us that the area under the curve to the right of an unknown z-score is 0.7852. We want that z-score. So once again, uh, we're going to use the z button. We have the area to the right. That's good. So we simply type that in, 0.75 or 7852. Uh, and that should tell us our unknown z-score to two decimal places, negative 0.79. Let's check it, and Alex is happy.